This episode is brought to you by Cloudly. As developers, we have times where we get to process a lot of data. Sometimes it's just a few kilobytes of data and we don't need to worry about the performance characteristics because computers are so fast. When we're looking at gigabytes or more of data, then we need to be more aware of the performance of our algorithms or we might not even be able to complete the process in our lifetime. In this video, we'll discuss the Q data structure and how to use queues in PHP. Hello developers and welcome to the PHP Architect channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Scott Keck Warren and on this channel, we discuss a wide variety of topics related to the PHP ecosystem. Make sure you subscribe so you can get our latest videos when they're published. And make sure you follow me at Scott Keck Warren on phpc.social and Twitter. Before we go too far into what a queue is, we need to have a small side discussion about data structures. A data structure is a way of organizing data inside of a computer so we can use it effectively. The overarching idea is that we need to be able to take data and use our code to optimize it so we can process it most efficiently. Depending on the data, there are lots of different ways it can be organized, but the same kind of problems keep coming up over and over again, so we have a basic set of data structures we can use to solve those problems. Each of these data structures has different performance characteristics. We'll use what's known as the big O notation to describe the performance of the data structure with different processes like adding elements, deleting elements, and searching for a specific element as the number of elements gets very large. It can range all the way from big O of one, indicating that it takes the same amount of time regardless of how many elements exist, or big O of n, indicating it increases linearly as the number of elements increases, all the way up to big O of n factorial, which is something we need to strive to prevent. Now, there are two major types of data structures. The first is a linear data structure where elements are arranged in a sequence. Examples of this include arrays, lists, stacks, and queues. The second is nonlinear data structures, where a linear structure doesn't work because of operational complexities. Examples of this include graphs and trees. Now, queues are an example of a linear data structure that contains elements that are linked to each other. This is much like a linked list, but the major difference is that queues operate in a first in, first out, or FIFO method. This means that we can only add elements from one end and remove them from the other. This makes them ideal for keeping track of items that need to be processed. Because they're linked to each other, we must access data sequentially, and random access is not possible. When we want to insert items into the queue, we do so at the end. Because we're keeping track of the end of the queue, adding an element is big O of 1. Deleting an element is generally only done at the beginning of the queue. Because we need to look at each element, when we're searching for an element in the queue, the worst case is to have to run through every element of the list, so it's big O of n. This isn't horrible, but it's not the best outcome for a search. So if you're doing a lot of searches, it's best to look at alternative data structures, like a tree. Depending on your implementation of the queue, your elements are either pushed or in queued to the list, and they're popped or dequeued. The built-in PHP class is based on the SPL double link list class, but it uses the in queue and dequeue functions. Some benefits of queues are that they do not require contiguous blocks of memory and therefore can help reduce memory fragmentation and they support efficient removal and addition of elements. More after this word from our sponsor. We appreciate our sponsors because they make this episode possible. Now, we all love to write code, but managing the servers that that code can run on is it can be a time-consuming and error-prone process. Think of how often you've seen reports of accidental AWS bills in the tens of thousands of dollars. Cloudways offers peace of mind and flexibility so you can focus on growing your business instead of dealing with server management. With Cloudways, you get an optimized stack, managed servers, backups, a staging environment, integrated Git, pre-configured Composer, 24-7 tech support, and a choice of five cloud providers, AWS, DigitalOcean, Linode, Google Cloud, and Vulture. For 20% off the first three months, use our code PHPARCH. That's P-H-P-A-R-C-H. Or go there now at phparch.com slash Cloudways. Thank you, Cloudways, for your support. Now, we must stress to never create your own implementation of data structures, as it wastes time that could be used to add helpful features to our software. When I was in a data structures class, we would spend a week implementing each data structure, and if we were lucky, it would compile. Someone has already uploaded an implementation of all of these data structures to GitHub if it isn't already included in PHP. 
Thankfully, PHP comes with an implementation of queues in the SPL queue lab class. It provides basic features we need to have a queue without too much extra. If you've watched our video on the SPL double link list class, a lot of this will be familiar as the SPL queue is implementing using the SPL double link list. The most important functions are the in queue and d queue, which push new elements into the queue and remove elements respectively. Because it's a queue, it doesn't have the shift and unshift function. Now, ideally, we would just push elements into the queue and then remove them when we're ready to process them. But we may also need to iterate through the elements to see what's inside the queue. There are two ways to do this. The first is using a for each loop. The other is using some of the other public functions of the SPL queue. For each is best for almost every case and it's less code, which is generally easier to read. Now, what we want to do is pop elements off as they shouldn't be needed again. That's kind of the whole point of the queue. To do that, we'll use the count function to see if there are still elements in the queue. At the end of this process, the queue will be empty because we popped all the elements off. Let's work through an example of how we can create a tool to loop through all of the files in a directory structure without using recursion. To start, we'll create a queue and put our search directory into it. For this example, we'll search the Etsy directory. Next, we'll enter into a loop where we loop through until we've checked all of the elements in the queue. I always like to set some kind of a count check to prevent an infinite loop, so we'll add that as well. Now we need to add a check to see if the current path is a directory. If it is, we'll get the contents of the directory and add it to our queue for later checks. Finally, we can add our logic to process the file. The benefit to this solution over recursion is that it's easier to debug and we could serialize the queue, save it to disk, and restart it later. As a recap, queues are a tool for keeping a linear list of items. They have good performance for inserting and deleting, but poor performance for searching. They're useful for keeping track of items that need to be processed. I hope you enjoyed our video. If so, make sure you subscribe, comment, share, and like as it does help others find us. Are there topics you would like to see us cover? Let us know in the comments below or send me a message at Scott Keck Warren on phpc.social and Twitter. I would love to hear how we can help you, and it always brightens my day when I hear from a fan. This is Scott Keck Warren for the PHP Architect channel signing off and reminding you to keep watching, keep coding, and keep reading. Thank you.